Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this week's Take and Make Teen Take and Make Craft Kit from Manlius Library. If you picked up your kit, you will have received a couple of pieces of paper with plain circles. One of them has just plain circles on it, and the other one has some designs outlined on it. Some, whoop. Some just plain white paper, a coaster that is cork, a little envelope. Be careful when you open your envelope. It has nails in it, little bitty nails. We're going to be doing um, string art, and for that you need little nails. My stapled shut, but good. Okay, so. Everybody has approximately 60 or so little, little bitty nails. So let's set those there. You also will have received one fine point, fine tip, black pen, and three random skeins of embroidery floss. For this project, you will also need a pair of scissors and you might find a pencil handy as well. Okay, so for the first part, we're doing two projects today. We're going to do string art. That's what the coaster, the cork coaster and the nails are and the thread. And I'm also going to show you a fun doodling technique, Zen doodling. We're going to start with the coaster. So for that, we need our nails and our our cork coaster, the plain white paper you can set aside along with the pen and the pencil, but you will want your scissors for this. So the first thing you need to do is decide what pattern or design you want on your coaster. The plain circles I designed to be just inside. So if you wanted to just do a plain circle and, um, string art, you could, or I gave you a few choices. There's a heart, a star, a dragonfly, and a flower. These are really more advanced, so if you've done string art in the past, I would recommend these. Um, I'm going to do the heart, so what you're going to do is cut it out. We'll start with that. set those aside. The circles and the other patterns are also really good for the next project, which is the Zen doodling. But I'm going to cut out this heart. You want to cut right on the line. This is going to be your pattern. For your string. got our coaster and it's probably hard to see the coaster on this table so I'm going to get a piece of white paper to put on there. Okay so it's not a white piece of paper but I think that the coaster will show up a little better on it. I also zoomed in just a little closer so you can see the fine details. So what you want to do is take your design. Now you could also just do a circle or you could draw your own design inside. This is really just a guide so that you know how big your coaster is. Okay, but I'm going to do the heart and you want to put your heart centered or wherever you, if you want it offset, that's fine as well. We're going to pour out some of these nails. We're not going to need them, probably not going to need them all for the heart. The good thing about doing this on, in cork is you don't need a hammer. You can just push the nails in. So we're going to start right there at the point. And now I am pushing the nails in just outside the outline. Okay. You could, if you wanted to 
push the nails through the paper, but then you have to weed the pieces of paper out once you take your design off. So I'm going to do it like that. Now, a couple of pointers. You want to make sure that your nails are fairly evenly spaced. Okay? And you also want them all to be right at about the same height. And an easy way to do that is to use one of your fingers and feel where it hits and make sure that they all hit at the same spot. You want them in pretty far. And you also would probably should set aside one nail. Make sure that you leave behind one nail. We're going to hang it on, put it in the back so that you can make a little hanger. So you can hang it on the wall. Okay? So we're going to go all the way around the heart. Pushing in our little nails. Keeping them pretty much the same distance and making sure that they're all at about the same height. You don't want them too far apart, but if you put them too close together, you won't be able to weave your, your thread through should also be thinking about perhaps what color you want to use. You can do more than one. If you are doing a more advanced pattern like the flowers, you could do the center as one color and the petals as another or just mix it up however you want. Okay, I'm just going all the way around this heart. You could use a little piece of scotch tape to tape this down if you wanted to. It's small enough that I didn't feel I needed to do that. I'm going to keep that nail right at the point and go up the other side. If your hands get tired, it's perfectly okay to take a rest in the middle. But because this is cork, they really press in fairly easily. perfectly spaced as you can see. If you if you wanted to make sure they were perfectly spaced, you could take your your pattern of whatever it is and using a pencil or a pen, you could mark it so that they're all exactly the same and then you'll know where to put your nails. I decided just to eyeball this, but you could absolutely draw your your um your nail pattern on ahead of time to make sure that it's perfect. I've never really been a perfectionist when it comes to crafts. I like it to look more like I did it than a professional did it. Okay. 
one thing to be careful of is you don't want to put the nail in and take it out and put it in and take it out in the same place because it will eventually make the hole too big and your nail won't stay in when you're stringing the thread around. Okay, almost done. You could, if you wanted to, draw your pattern right on the um, cork and then put the nails in. But keep in mind that unless you use a really light touch with your pen or pencil, your outline will show. And the point of this is to have the art be the string. So there we go. We've got our heart with the nails all around it. Now I'm just going to use the pencil to just kind of flick that up. You want to be careful not to pull the nails out when you're taking your pattern away. So there we have it. You can always adjust the nails later as far as if they're straight, if they're all the same. It's not quite as difficult as if you're using, say, a piece of wood with nails and having to hammer each one in, then you really have to be careful. So I'm going to put all my leftover nails back in this little bag. And as you can see, I still have quite a few nails left over. I mean, there's lots. So fold those up and set that aside for safekeeping for later. Okay, and now you want to decide what color. I think I will use the blue because I think the blue is going to actually show up the best for the camera. So I'm going to use the blue. Got my one little nail here set aside for hanging. And as I said, you could use more than one color if you want to. So we're going to take the, take the paper off and you want to open up your string just to make sure it's not tangled. Okay? You can untangle it as you go, but you really want a good, a good length of string to start. Okay. So we're going to take the end. And we're going to make a slip knot. So make a loop, wrap it around your fingers, and tuck in just the short end. And then pull that and you've got yourself a slip knot. Okay? So we're gonna, and you wanna leave a good sized tail because that's how you're gonna tie it off at the end. Okay? So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna start at the point. So put your string around and pull it. See, now you've got your tail. You wanna leave your tail and pull that tight. Now you'll notice if I pull on it without holding the nail, the nail moves. You don't want that to happen. So hang on to the nail while you're pulling it tight. Okay. We'll just keep that in the back out of the way. Now all you're going to do is create a pattern. So you're going to take it and go down around and then back up to another one and down to it. And it's, it's really just weaving however, whoop. now you'll see that it slipped off. 
if you're cu if you're cutting a really short angle or you're changing direction, you want to wrap the yarn or the thread all the way around the the nail. Okay, loop it all the way around and then make a short angle. Okay? And about every five loops, you want to wrap it around as well. Okay? But anytime you see the thread start to slip off, just give it an extra loop around that nail. And we're just doing a pattern. I'm going to bring my thread over on this side. Okay, we're just doing a pattern. It can be random. Mine is going to clearly be random. It can be as specific as you want it to be. The important thing is that you hit each nail at least once. Okay, now, because this comes down, I'm not going to go from this nail up across there because that would cut off the heart. What I will do is go from this nail to this nail. Whoop. And this is one of your cases of having to loop it around again. Loop it. And then from that nail, I'll go up there. Okay? And then the same. I'll go down here to go up here and down here to go up there. Okay? You can also wrap it all the way around to give it an outline and make sure you loop it around that middle or that, that inner point and then go all the way around. Okay, so you've got your outline. And just keep winding until it's how you like it. Fill in your spaces. And as I said, make sure you wrap each nail at least once. Loop that one. Loop that one down here. Okay, then we're going to go back up to our original nail and twist around all the way around. And we're going to cut the thread and tie it off and just tie it together with your tail that you had left behind before. Make sure that loops around. This is the trickiest part. Okay, tie it. Nice knot. Okay, and then cut it right up close. Where the knot is. Okay. And there we have a string art heart. Okay, so the second activity for today is Zen doodling. And for all you need for that is a piece of paper and a fine tip black pen. If you'd like to practice with a pencil, make sure it's a very sharp pointed pencil, but I like to just go with the flow with a pen, which is, that's, these are really great um, for this activity. Uh, Zen doodling is done on a small piece of paper or a small section of a piece of paper. If you took part in last, the last kit that we did, pardon me, which was the decorating of the journals, 
that is the perfect platform to do this kind of activity. I actually think this is a little too big for mine, so I'm, I'm going to fold it in half. This is just that piece of paper that you got that was folded in quarters. I tore mine into those quarters, but now I'm going to fold it in half, and we're going to start even smaller. And it's a little book. So all you're going to do is with your pen and your imagination, you're just going to draw patterns. Let's tear this. And you're going to fill them in with other patterns. I'm going to get rid of this. Okay? So... Just using your imagination and letting, basically letting the pen draw where you want it to. The best thing about Zen doodling is there's no right or wrong in how to do it. You could do something very curvy. You could do something very straight. You could bring the two together. But what you want to end up with are small sections. And continue your patterns. This is a great activity for people who don't think they can draw because it will show you that you really can draw. I, I, am no draw drawer. I am no sketch artist. Okay, so we're gonna do maybe continue that and just go with the flow. Until you end up with little sections and you can make them as big or as little as you want. Okay. I think we're going to continue this. There. So then when you've got the way, when you've got it so that you like the look of the designs, all you're going to do, and I am going to bring this piece of paper back because I'm writing on my table. All you're going to do is take a section and fill it with a pattern. So, for example, this section here, I'm just going to fill with stripes. And your patterns can be as simple or as intricate as you want. For example, maybe this circle. is going to be filled you don't want to press down too hard and when you get to an edge finish it okay and then you can now you've got another section that may be is filled a different way. And perhaps this one you want just dots. So those are some simple patterns that you could do. You could also do something like a line and a line and connect them. A line and a line and connect them. A line
it's really just doodling, but it's, I, I, I think, I think of it as doodling with intent. It helps keep my mind focused. So it's absolutely perfectly fine to move from one section, maybe I finished that section for now, and I want to come over here and just do that. And then maybe within each of those, I want to do something, like color that one in and strike that one and color that one in and dot that one. Okay, so you're really just relaxation doodling. So there you go. That is Zen doodling. And there we have our two patterned projects. You can find lots and lots of patterns, both for string art and for Zen doodling, and it's called bunches of different things as well. Um, but if you look for Zen doodling, you can find lots of different ideas and patterns and designs, um, suggestions. It's really so a lot of So thanks for joining me today. My name is Lori, and I'm the teen librarian at Manlius Library. And the next kit has opened up today You can for registration. You can find that information at our website, www.manliestlibrary.org. I will see you again in two weeks. You can find me here on our YouTube channel every other Thursday at 3 o'clock for a new art and a new craft. I'll see you next time. Happy crafting!